This is revision one of the syllabus for 2020. Um, this is a great way to present this information. You can watch this at two times speed. I'd recommend that. These are just kind of the rules, but we need to lay these out in front of us so that we have a sense of what, how we're going to behave together. Um, let's just dig into it. This is Engineering 305. I'm teaching Section A. That's going to be at 1030. Um, we've got multiple classrooms. We're not going to worry about that right now. My name is Ren Tubergen. Uh, my office is not SB 128. Hey, let's change that. I just moved to SB 131, Professor Hooksma's old office. Um, but I don't think any of you have had Professor Hooksma. Oh, maybe you did for 209. But um, my phone number is the same and my email is the same, 5267313 and rgt3 at calvin.edu. I'll be honest, I, um, I'm not in the office a ton and we've got a new system with these little headphones. I'm not sure... Uh, the phone is a great option, or it is a good option, but you're going to wind up leaving a message, and I will call you back or try to reach out to you um, via email or something else. But that is available as a method to get a hold of me. The goals for this class, we are going to apply the principles of mechanics uh, to the solution of problems in stress and strain of engineering materials. Um, Engineering materials is a funny word that we throw in that sentence because there are materials that are really cool, but are not consistent and we're not going to be building and designing with them. And so, and that's even loaded, but our work is going to include studying the resistance to force, bending, torque, shear, eccentric loading, deflections of beams, buckling of columns, and then adding some of those things together to compound simple stresses. We are also going to introduce different failure theories. So there's my short elevator pitch for what we're going to do in this class. And a lot of those words are loaded and will the academic phrases unpack those during this semester. Let's talk about our course learning objectives. Every course should have learning objectives that it introduces right up front. For me, this is a very partial list. I have a more detailed list and it says right here, go to the document which is titled, oh, my screen pen, sorry. Go to the document titled Engineering 305 Course Learning Objectives. There is a much longer list and you will see how that breaks down um, chapter by chapter according to Riley, the, our textbook. You'll see how those break down by each chapter and then what we're going to do to learn those things. And I will present you with some of the tools that I've done to um, identify those things uh, later because there's only so much time. So as an overview of the course, by the end of this course, students will be able to be a comment, uh, solve basic stress and strain problems. These problems include stress and strain transformations stress and strain relationships, and stresses due to tension, compression, shear, bending, thermal, pressure vessels, torsion, and buckling loads. A lot of different types of loads there. Um, we'll manage them one at a time. We are going to calculate deformations due to applied loads. We're going to see how much things bend, and those are going to include axial, torsion, and bending, as well as beam loads. We're going to apply stress and strain knowledge to solve design problems. We're going to use the information that we've figured out in one and two to start using that information to design things so that things don't break, so that things don't bend too much. We're going to measure strain and or deflections, and we will interpret their results. There's a particular lab that I'm thinking about when I put that. And we're also going to use FEA, that's finite element analysis to determine stresses under varying, uh, under a variety of loading conditions. And FEA is a great tool. It comes within Inventor. It comes uh, within SolidWorks uh, to some extent. And we're going to use that tool to help us do calculations that are, uh, would otherwise be very challenging um, by hand, but we still have to understand how to do the hand calculations uh, to make sense of what's going on in the FEA because the results that we get are interesting. So 
There are also going to be some larger themes that you're going to be exposed to um, during the class. And those themes don't, those themes include the fact that engineering formulas are a model or a metaphor for how the world works. It does not work this way. That is, our formulas aren't correct. Our formulas aren't, but that this is a way that we use to understand the world. Um, if you go back to um, everything, you know, that force equals mass times acceleration. Well, that's true, kind of until you approach the speed of light. And that's what Einstein was telling us. Well, we don't ever approach the speed of light, not practically. And so we don't really need to know about that last little bit. Well, what this class is gonna show us is that we've got an idea of how the world works, or we've got equations that describe it, but they're not any better than a metaphor. And those metaphors break down. So, each one of those metaphors, number two, there, each one of those metaphors involves assumptions, and assumptions allow us to view the world with simpler and simpler metaphors, and that's so that we can understand them. That's so that we can come to a place where it makes sense. And then what we hear a lot from students are that we wish we could do real problems. Well, real problems are not any better or any worse than textbook problems. The difference with a textbook problem is that they've already made these assumptions so that we can begin and we all look at the problem using the same model. If we all started at different points, we would all arrive at different points, but we would have all done a great job, potentially. But that doesn't help in a learning environment. So textbook problems are made to keep the class together as a group, but they're not necessarily about stimulating the best learning. And then the last thing is understanding how to make good assumptions is a lifelong battle. You will never be done with making a hard choice about is this an assumption good or is this an, assu is this an assumption that is bad? And that's something we'll always battle. So course flow and structure of the class. So Professor Han and I worked really hard over the summer to think about everything got changed in the spring. Not all of it was bad. Some of it was just different. Some of it was better, honestly. And so we worked really pretty hard on understanding what were the good things, what were the bad things. I think universally what we both hate is the first lecture of the world being this document with all the rules. And that's really, so we decided we wouldn't do that. We're gonna take this lecture, which is really dry and boring, and you have all the information in front of you, and we just deliver that online. And we continued to think through what things should be online, and what things should be done through a video, and what things should we spend classroom time on, which is really valuable. So, one of the things that we are changing is that um, we're going to we're going to do a lot of a lot of your homework. We'll be watching videos of the material to help you with the written parts of the homework. That is the problem solving during class. We would like to spend time every day. I believe we'll see how this goes. We would like to spend time every day on saying, hey, are you stuck on something? Maybe we can shine a little light on how do we get past this hurdle that we're stuck on? How do we solve this next little problem so that you don't spend hours and hours on something that we probably should have covered in five minutes? We hope in that way the learning will be more efficient. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to use more quizzes. Professor Hahn has been doing this for years, this quizzes for recall, where There'll be a small quiz just to get you to exercise that neuron and to help cement that memory in your brain. And so during the course of the week, we'll go through a process of introducing material and doing homework. And when we get to the third day, when we get to Wednesday, we're going to use a quiz for recall. 
to help stimulate those neurons to make sure that you're pulling that out of memory. And then on Friday, we'll have a test on some other old material. Now, this all has to play out. And this is going to be done, in my mind, the way I think about this is as, a, is, as the way we sing around, like when we were kids and we sang, row, row, row your boat. So it's going to look like this for a particular week. We're going to introduce some new material and we're going to spend two days on that material and, and we'll do more on that too. And then we're going to do a quiz for recall on that material. And then you get a week to finish the homework. So here's the review of homework for material one. And then another nine days later, we're gonna take a test on that material. And while we're doing that, we're gonna put in new material for the second week. And we're gonna spend more time on the new material. And we're gonna do a quiz for recall on Wednesday on both of those. And we'll have some, and, and then we'll do the homework. And then we keep, and so this round keeps building. Um, week through, we do th new material, new material, and then we do a quiz for recall on one, two, and three when we take, and then we'll take that test on material one. So every week we'll start, and I get this can probably be a little bit confusing, but every week we'll be introducing new material. And every week we'll be taking a brief quiz on that material, five, seven minutes, maybe five minutes of quiz on that material. And then the next week we'll start with new material. And every week we introduce new material. Once we've introduced, once we've done our little quiz for recall, a week later we'll have homework that's due. And a week after the homework was due, we'll take a test on that material. So you'll see every week there's going to be a test, test on material one, test on material two. If we did week five, you'd see there'd be a test on material five. Now, this is going to be adjusted in the first week because we want to put some emphasis on the importance of statics and dynamics. Um, and so there will, be, um, there will be some additional work. There's going to be an additional test here on the second week, which will be over the statics and dynamics because that's recall. We will do some simpler material here and we'll do maybe a harder problem there but we will be testing your ability to do the statics and dynamics. So this will also get adjusted um, at times because we've got throughout the fall, we've got various days off where we're changing for advising days. And so we want to take that into account and we want to put those we don't want to build a complex schedule with all those details in um, because other things will change during the course of the semester as well. The schedule. The schedule is contained in a separate file. Um, and honestly, it's probably gonna get adjusted as the semester progresses. We are going to, um, look at that, Moodle. We are going to change some of the way the homework rolls out. And if I give you exactly the way the semester will go, then if there are sticking points that as a class we're struggling with, I, um, I lose the ability to go back and adjust that. So we will adjust some of the schedule on the fly, but I will keep that posted in Moodle and it will be adjusted as, and changed as we go. All right, the final exam will be Tuesday, December 15, 9. Damn. There you go. Now I know. That's not as important this year as it is in other years. Part of that's because we're going to test every week. So we have a lot of testing to do. So our textbook, Mechanics and Materials 6th Edition. I just got a question last night from, I won't give away names, who said, hey, what if we use 5th edition? Well, I don't know about fifth edition. I think they mixed up the homework problems. I don't have, I don't know that I even have a copy of the fifth edition, but I do have a copy of the fourth edition and I know the homework and even the chapters are significantly different. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you probably stick with the sixth, um, but you don't need the code. You don't need the online code. We do not use that feature of the textbook. We will also be using FEA, and that either is with Inventor or SolidWorks. So it's up to the student to decide which package you want to use. Um, 
One factor in your decision could be that Autodesk Inventor is available as a free download, so you can put that on your computer and run it locally, and that has its advantages. So, section on grading. Everybody wants to know how the grades get established. Homework is worth 10%. That is, I know, that's a very small amount. That's where the learning is going to take place, and that's going to show up. The learning is going to show up on tests. So um, homework is going to be more about completion. And uh, did you, if you spent the time on it, the work, the work will show up. There is a, there are labs and computer assignments to do. Um, those are also a smaller part. The final exam is worth ten percent, and class participation is worth plus or minus five percent. That does raise your grade or lower your grade, depending on your contribution and your contribution style. Course policies. We should put it right in here. Clean this up. Course policies. All homework must be able to stand on its own. Most of the homework can follow a common process of describing the problem, providing a sketch, listing any observed relationships, probably some algebra and a final solution, which should be boxed for clarity. In this way, each homework problem submitted will tell a short, self-contained story. Getting used to this process will better prepare us for tests where, key, where communication is a key. You will see me use that as I go through the homework in the first uh, as I do, as I solve homework problems, I keep on my screen, there are seven steps that I have for doing a homework problem. And I will occasionally refer back and go, did I do these? Did I do this? Did I do this? Having that as a system that we look, walk through that process will help us when we get into problems that we don't know how to attack. The system is good. What do we know about the system? What is the problem? What do we know about the system? Are there relationships that we know? What can we find out? How can we solve it? It's a, uh, it is a good system and it does help us tell that story of solving the problem. Um, I do believe that that's, that that's the way you, uh, telling a good story is always important. So reading and video assignments are listed in the live calendar in Moodle and will be continually updated. The due dates for reading and videos will be in Moodle and no assignment will be posted with less than a two day turnaround time. <clears throat> Your assignments will include watching videos like this one, but you can do it at twice speed. Tests are gonna be given every Friday and may vary in format. They will closely follow the homework, but they'll also have additional elements so that we flex your memory muscle. That may include fill in the blank, multiple choice, or problems that require a solution and even essays to explain what you have done. What I found in the spring, this is one of the things that I learned that I thought was very valuable, was the answer's good, but having you write down what you did to solve the problem to how you thought through the problem really showed whether you understood what you were doing and allowed you to tell that story because in the within the constraints of a test you're doing duh, 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 and you're you're hurried to get through and you don't necessarily format your story very well but if you write an essay about your solution that's where you can really tell your story the final exam will be closed book. The questions posed will be similar to the tests, quizzes, and homework. Some questions may include a physical situation that will require you to be able to identify which failure mode is important and to be able to do the appropriate analysis. You will be able to bring the formula sheet, which is provided. Um, the formula sheet is you're starting to see there's another document. We refer to another document. The formula sheet's available uh, in Moodle, not quite right now, but it will be before you start class. Um, and we'll have all the formulas that you'll need through the course of the semester. Um, it is located, a copy of that is located in the header section of Moodle. That is, I think that forces you to understand those equations instead of having the textbook, which then I can get more explanation when I need it during a test. This forces you to understand those equations on their own. Your personal investment in this class will be a key contributor to your success. 
and any other areas of grading, but it will be used separately as a grading criteria. This category will capture some tangibles like class attendance and tardiness, as well as contributions to discussion and learning um, and learning or the environment or the learning environment. That is, if you're a distraction, then that's not a good thing. And, and that's not a professional skill that we want. So some of this is professionalism. Um, at the same time, well, we'll hit some of the other, we'll hit some areas of professionalism moving forward too. So under class policies. Um, I will make reasonable accommodations for persons with documented disabilities. These, this syllabus kind of provides the rules for how we are going to behave. Um, but if we have a unique situation, um, if you have been created by God with um, differences that are pertinent to how you perform in the class, I would love to accommodate them to the extent that I can and keeping the class fair, fair for everyone. But if you've got documented disabilities, then we start making our own rules differently. Um, and that has to do with working through the um, Center for Student Success over in Hemingway Hall. Please make me aware of that as quickly as possible. But um, for this policy, really, it's within the first two weeks so that we can make proper accommodations. Technology in class will be tolerated up to the point that it's disruptive. In other words, if you're using cell phones, if you're not a distraction to those people around you when you text, I think that's almost impossible to do. But if you're not a distraction to me and to others, I, it's fine. I think that's a poor professional um, habit to be in. Um, but there are going to be times where that may be necessary. Um, I don't know... Um, I'll just say, from personally for me, um, my father is currently in hospice as of August the 18th. Um, he is in hospice. And so um, I may need to take a phone call during class. I may need to step out to uh, respond to a situation that arises. And um, I can't assume that you might not have things in your life that will also be disruptive um, but we're going to handle those professionally. If you need to take a phone call, take the phone call, step out of class. If you need to, I understand. Minimize disruptions. Always be courteous and considerate of those around you and about the learning environment um, that you are helping to create. Dishonesty will not be tolerated. Here you go. Red pen. Um. I can't say that strongly enough. I, I think there is no place in the workplace for a dishonest employee. And um, you're wasting my time if it is your, if that's the way you're going to behave professionally. And so I just don't, can't, I can't do it. Each of you have signed the AHIP policy, and I don't expect this to be an issue for anybody in this class. So having said that, Having, having just come down, put the hammer on dishonesty, I want to say that there is a ton of opportunity and I want you to work collaboratively, even in this COVID environment. I want you to get together and work on problems and solve them together. Maybe that means using Teams. Maybe that means using Zoom or other technologies. But homework is an area where I really want you to spend time together, build relationships and solve things together. Um, biblical here. Here's my here's my Bible verse. Remember, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. The way this helps is that you can help each other find stupid mistakes. You may get a homework problem, and you probably did in 202, where you're working through it, and you've got sign, sign, sign. It's sign of an angle. Sign. Of, no, it's not. It's cosine. And you, from the time you write it down, you're convinced it's sine. And until somebody else comes alongside you and goes, no, that's cosine. Oh, now let's think about that. And what's, you can catch your partners, your friends, stupid mistakes quickly. So you don't waste a lot of time. And that's what we hope to be doing in this class with this rearranged environment. We hope that you can spend some time thinking through the problem. And if there are stupid things that 
just mistakes you know better. I don't want to say stupid mistakes that you're making because you're stupid. No, just you're overlooking something. We would like to solve those together. So um, I really want to encourage people to work together. Now, working together is not copying answers. That is not solving a problem that doesn't promote learning. Tests are going to be similar to the homework. So understanding the solution technique is going to be strongly linked to your ability to do that on tests, which then strongly influences your grade. So um, these working together is a concept from extreme programming, which has been done in industry for a long time. And I, I hope that that's beneficial to you. So those concepts don't apply to tests, however. Tests are used to assess your individual understanding of the material, and it's got to be taken individually. So for uniformity, because, because cheating and academic um, integrity is very important to Calvin and very important to the engineering department, the department wants us to use the following language. So you're going to see this change in font right here, student professionalism. And this change in font, these are, this is part of what you have signed off on. And this is a standard form with some modifications. So you signed this AHIP policy. And so there are examples here that we put in. So um, for an in-class test or the final exam, here's an example of dishonest behavior, using internet, using a cell phone or a communication device, viewing another person. These are the obvious things. We know this. This language is here so that there are no questions about what we're defining. Um, and if you do have questions, this should lay the groundwork where you can come to me and ask a good question. You know what? I'm going to turn off um, that because I know some other people object. I like that, but there you go. After we get through the whole thing. Um, demonstrating professionalism is factored into the class participation component of the grade. The department and university have several um, different policies which apply to your conduct in and out of class. Specifically, we all signed an additional statement this year or acknowledged an additional statement this year about how we're going to behave in the, in the face of COVID and how we're going to uh, protect each other. For clarity, if there are these other policies you think may relate to your situation, you may want to review the safe spaces policy, which can be found there. I'm going to put it in a return here. The safe spaces policy for the university can be found there. The professionalism policy for the engineering department can be found there. The academic honesty and integrity policy for the engineering department can be found at that address. All right. Um, two topics left. Two topics. Are, are, you, are you ready for that? Can we, can we handle two more? Um, I hope you're still on 200% speed. Contact in and out of class. You can get a hold of me a whole bunch of different ways. Email is a great way to do it. That's probably the best way. Um, it shows up on my phone, as does voicemail for my other from my uh, office line. Um, I will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Understand, I do um, sleep occasionally. Um, I do um, I, I do step away from my phone at times. So. Um, my email address is at the top of the syllabus, the rgt3 at calvin.edu. Um, similarly, you should monitor, if you expect me to monitor my email, you should also monitor your email. Um, if there are things that I post with a short lead time on the due date, I will send out an email. Um, I also don't want to just flood your box with, hey, I hope you're having a nice day, and I've got to change one little detail and... And I'm going to know it. Yeah. Um, if there are big changes that have time sensitivities to them that I can't talk about in class, I will post. I will send out email. Um, but otherwise, um, in general, Moodle will be the communication tool because things will change slowly. Uh, phone number. When the problem's too hard to describe by email, that happens. Give me a call and leave. Um, if you want me to call you back, leave me a phone number. So I will have office hours. What I, um, and this might change. And the reason is because the special for 2020 COVID disclaimer. 
Um, I will have some office hours. They'll be posted on the uh, schedule outside on the front of my door. Um, and, and so that's good. Appointment always works also. Um, and, and we can af- arrange a time that fits our schedule. In general, this class is at 1030. I'm teaching senior design at 230. And so I have a window in the middle of there that we probably can find some time to meet. On Tuesdays, I teach uh, Engineering 181 Lab in the afternoon. So Tuesdays are a bad day, which is a little unfortunate since I have since the homework is due on Wednesday. But um, I would be available after the Engineering 181 Lab. You can also always just stop by. Um, where that office is, the how the hallway outside can be loud, as it's right by the entrance to the building. So for that reason, sometimes my door is closed. The other reason the door might be closed is I might be playing some music, which might not necessarily be acceptable to everybody. Um, I don't want to impose my music on other people, but um, you can, so knock. Um, I may, because I'm going to be making more videos this year, I may have a sign that says I'm recording and I may ignore you, but um, it's just, I'll probably stop the video, but we'll figure that out. We will sort that out. So... This isn't an exhaustive list of possibilities for how you can reach out to me. It's just the stuff I can think of right now that's pretty obvious. So, um, and lastly, the special for 2020 COVID disclaimer. Um, it's the big deal. We, I don't know. Um, um, as I sit here this morning, August 18th, This is the eighth day of classes for University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and they have suspended classes for the semester because of COVID. So everything that we just talked about assumes that we're in control and the semester marches on like a normal year. And in North Carolina, they have already decided that it's not a normal year. So if that's, if it's the case, if we're not in control, then there's going to be a lot of grace and we're going to work together to make sure that you get the knowledge that you need from this class in a comfortable and safe environment. Um, I will, we will figure this out together, um, but we'll figure it out. And so um, I, I guess I want to say the, in, the interesting thing about this, when I, when I type this up, Everything above assumes that we're in control and the semester marches on like a normal year. I think there's two things there that we really have to talk about. And one is the semester marches on like a normal year. And that is the immutable God that we serve, that he does not change. And that's what makes our study of science and engineering possible because the laws of physics don't change what we call the laws of physics, what I'm calling up above the observed relationships, those things don't change. And that allows us to solve engineering problems because those fundamental things don't change. The other thing that's in that sentence is that says that assumes that we are in control and we're not. God is in control. And maybe those will be our devotions for the first week of class will be Psalm 46. Though the mountains roar, though the sea foams, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, God will not be moved. God is in control. Be still and know that I am God. So um, two things, two fundamental theological statements in this one sense. We are not in control and we'll find out if it marches on like a normal year. So, all right. Hope you're well. Great. We got this lecture, which I always say is the worst lecture of the year, out of the way. So um, now we get to have a new worst lecture for the year. So since this is a video. Hope you're doing well. Take care.